Symmetry is a modifier which gives us the ability to model bilaterally symmetrical objects and weld the seam at the same time, and that way avoiding any issues along that seam with any subsequent modifiers such as open subdiv. I've prepared a box primitive here such that I've got an open border and the pivot point is positioned exactly on that border. The reflection plane of the symmetry modifier will be placed at the pivot point by default. With the object selected, I'll go into the Modify panel. From the Modifier list, scroll down to Symmetry. Add that, and we immediately see we get the other half of our box back. We can see when we turn that symmetry on and off, we're able to preview the results. Here's the symmetry plane, or the gizmo, and it's positioned right on that seam where I want it to be. Turn that back on again. The really great thing about the symmetry modifier is it welds the seam vertices automatically if they fall within this distance threshold. That means there is no seam here anymore. This is now one solid box object, but it is now symmetrical. And that's important because when we add the open subdiv or any other subdivision surface modifier, we don't want any seam there. If there was a seam in the control cage, if there were two separate elements or two separate shells, that would result in an ugly crease in the subdivided model. At this point, we can actually go ahead and see the result of the symmetry. We can go into the editable poly base object, turn on show end result, and go into some subobject modes such as point, and maybe select some points in the top view, select like those points at that corner maybe, grab the move tool, and position them. Go over to the perspective view maybe and right click so we don't lose our selection. And we can see that the symmetry is in effect. All right, cool. I'll exit out of subobject, go up to the top of the stack, select the symmetry modifier, and now add our subdivision surface modifier, open subdiv, from the modifier list. Here it is, open subdiv. We've got one iteration here. If we want to see the final level of detail, we can disable ISO line. Let's leave it at one level of iteration for now. And to simplify the display, we'll turn isoline back on again. Now all we need to do is go back down into the editable poly base object and edit using the sub object modes. Select by vertex, maybe getting close in the top view, control alt middle mouse, select some vertices and move those around and see how that affects the final subdivided model. Orbit around in perspective. To make the display a little bit clearer, you might choose to disable edged faces. Press the F4 key, and now we can see the control cage superimposed over the shaded model, and we're not seeing those ISO lines at all. When modeling with symmetry, we need to be careful about the points at the seam or at the open border of the control cage. If I select one of these points, get in close. If I move a point in the negative X direction, and push it out towards the other side of the mirrored object, it doesn't seem like we have any problem. And that looks okay. And the reason that it looks okay is because the symmetry is automatically welding the seam there. But if we move in the positive x direction, then eventually we'll create a gap there. That area is not being welded because this point and its reflected neighbor are farther apart than the threshold value of the symmetry modifier. So I'll undo that with Control Z. It's not strictly necessary that you model a symmetrical object at the origin or at an X position of zero, but it is recommended because that will make it easy for you to move these points back to an X position of zero, which is the seam. You can also select by edge and manipulate edge loops. So let's go to edge subobject mode and double click to select an edge loop. And we can, for example, scale that. Grab the Scale tool and scale it in Y to change up the shape. Double click on its neighbor and once again scale in Y. And that works fine for scaling in Y or in Z, for example. Double click and scale in Z. And we have no issues there. I'll undo that with Control Z. But if we wish to scale across the reflection plane, in this case in the X axis, we may have issues. So I'll double click on this edge loop that's running in the x axis 
and try to scale it in X. And once again, we get into a problem with the seam here. So to avoid that, we can scale relative to the object's pivot point using transform coordinate center. I'll undo that with control Z. Up on our main toolbar, we're using the scale tool and we can choose its reference coordinate system. If we were scaling at the object level and we wanted to scale relative to the pivot point, then we could simply choose local coordinates. But that doesn't work in sub-object mode, unfortunately. We need to choose the object as its own reference coordinate system and additionally use transform coordinate center mode. From the pull-down list for reference coordinate system, choose pick and then click on the object itself. And its name is listed up here. It's chair task bottom cushion, but it's truncated so we don't see the entire thing. Next we need to go into transform coordinate center mode. And that's this button here that is currently labeled use pivot point center. Click and hold that button and go over to the bottom or the third icon in the flyout, which is transform coordinate center. And now the transform coordinate center is going to use whatever we've chosen as our reference coordinate system as the center for transforms. And we can see now the scale tool is positioned at the pivot point of the object. And I can scale in X and I no longer have any issue with breaking the seam. I can double click another edge loop and again scale in X. Alright, that's the basics of using symmetry in combination with OpenSubdiv.